is that if you don't have a DVD, please get please get a DVD. I don't want to take these home with me. They're totally free. You can throw those back there. Um, okay, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, about the four keys on this course and give you some perspective on the race. Um, so a couple things. Um, I love Ironman Florida. I absolutely love Ironman Florida. It's a great first time race. It's a great race. They run it well here. Um, there are in challenges involved in any Ironman, uh, and I'm going to cover some of those today and hopefully give you some perspective. But know this. We are less than 24 hours away from your race. If I say something that just seems totally crazy to you, you don't have to do what I say, okay? You have your plan, you need to have confidence in your plan, follow your plan, execute your plan. I'm more than happy to have a conversation with you in a week and we can talk about how to do something better. That's totally fine. Um, but I'm gonna give you our take sort of on endurance station, how we handle this, okay? So, for the swim, the big question is, where do I seed myself? Everyone's saying, where am I gonna seed myself? I'm a good swimmer, a bad swimmer, a slow swimmer. I go to the left, I go to the right, you know, whatever whatever your problem is, we all have those problems. Out here, it's, it's intimidating, because you're gonna have to walk across that timing mat, um, and you're gonna be standing on the beach with all these people, it's a huge crowd. Um, what I tell our athletes is, look at what happens to the pros. Get yourself down there before 6.45, so you can see the pros go off, and see what happens to them when they start swimming, okay? Right now you can see the waves and the way they're coming in, they're kind of coming in this direction. It's going to be pushing you into the buoys on the way out and away from the buoys on the way back. You want to see what it's going to look like on race morning. And I would seed myself according to what I see happening to the pros, okay? Because it is a standing start on the beach. We're all standing close together, but by the time you all move in the water, it kind of spreads out a little bit, okay? People kind of spread out naturally. If it was a standing start, uh, like Kona or like Placid or whatever it may be, we're all standing together like this and then we all lay down. That doesn't work, right? You're like dominoes. Everybody is on top of each other. This works a little bit better. That said, uh, there is no escaping the fact that it's an Ironman and there's going to be people swimming all around you. There's no lane lines and you're going to get bumps. Okay? Uh, the key to having a great swim is maintaining your form the best of your, to the best of your ability. Our key for doing that is counting your strokes. You want to count your strokes, okay? Take yourself out of the game of looking for the next buoy. Don't play the looking for the next buoy game, okay? Uh, it's easy to get psyched out and those buoys never come close enough. You're like, I swear to God, that thing was right here and it seems to be the same distance. Every time you look at it, you feel like, the, you know, like you're in a, a Monty Python movie, right? You're, you can't get closer, you can't get closer. It's very easy to get carried away without it here. Instead, focus on your technique. I literally count my strokes till I lose count and then I start recounting my strokes, okay? Very sexy, huh? Family, you're like, what are they thinking out there as they swim? You know, one, two, three, four. Had a great day. Um, but ultimately, that's what you need to focus on because you want to have a, a great swim. And inside Endurance Station, you're only going to swim as fast as your ability to maintain your form. The minute you start to feel your form deteriorate, that's when you need to back off. Okay? So for me, it's four count breathing. If I can breathe four count, I'm in an awesome place. If I'm breathing three count or two count, unless there's something going on like waves hit me in the face, or I'm getting bunched up or something like that, that means I'm losing my technique. And when I lose my technique, I simply swim slower. Hands down, I swim slower, okay? Um, out here on race day, uh, things will bunch up at every buoy. It's, uh, again, if you watch it from above, triathletes, there's a, there's a, if we're looking straight down at it, right? Like, there's a buoy here and everybody's swimming. They need to go out here, but everyone goes like this. Boom. They go to the next one, boom. They go to the next one. Like, they all need to touch it to go to the next one, right? I'm like, those are the rules, gotta touch it. Um, and you'll find yourself going that way. Out here, you don't have to worry about being on the outside of the buoy line going out. You only have to go around the turn buoys. Okay, so if you find yourself on the inside, you don't have to stop and then try and swim this way when everyone else is swimming this way. So you can get outside the buoy and go, you know. If they want you to go around a buoy, there will be people out there on boards and jet skis telling you to go to the side. You will see those people, okay. Um, your goal is to swim as smoothly as you can out. Uh, the first loop of an Ironman takes forever for you first timers. You're seemingly the first leg out is forever. There's no way I'm going to make this thing. Second loop is much faster than the first loop, okay? You're going to come back in. As you're coming back in, there's some sandbars out there, okay? You, uh, I am pretty sure, I mean, at least the last four years running, and probably this year again as well, that about 500 or you know, 1,000 feet out from the beach, you're going to be swimming, and then you're going to see people running next to you in their wetsuits. <laughs> and then they're going to be swimming again. Uh, you do not want to stand up and walk in your wetsuit. It's a really bad idea. In water, more resistance with the sun beating down on you. Um, unless you absolutely have to. 
I would take strokes in like four inches of water if I could to keep floating. You are much more, it's you just zip along. Everyone else is walking, they're not going anywhere, okay? Avoid that temptation to stand unless you have to stand, okay? You can just swim all the way in. When you get to the beach, again, it's not a race at this point. We're not at mile 18. You jog up the beach, go around over the timing mat. They actually have cups of like water and perform for you, which you don't get at any other Ironman. It's actually kind of a nice perk to get the salt water out of your mouth. You're back in again. Uh, the second, if the first loop is a, is a square, you go out, over, and back in. The second loop, you actually have to kind of go diagonally. There'll be a random buoy over here that no one notices in the morning, but you have to go diagonally around this buoy, out here again, and then over, okay? Um, so if the wind is blowing the way it is today, you're going to be swimming directly into those waves on that diagonal trip. Directly into waves is not a problem. The problem is when you're swimming, you want to swim this way and the waves are coming this way, everyone's natural tendency is to turn this way. You want to turn into those waves. So you're going to find people being pushed this way, but they want to swim, want to swim out that way. Okay? So be mindful of what happens to you on lap one. Try and improve upon that for lap two. It's your sole goal. Okay? You come out on... Uh, at the end of lap two, you cross the mat, you jog up the beach. There's some showers right there. If you want them, you don't want them. You come jogging in here and you go into the hotel, you get your bag and you can change up. Um, transition. Uh, your goal in transition is to get all the stuff on you need to ride your bike. Uh, if you can, the fewer moving parts you have in your transition, the better your transition will be. If you're in there and you're like, I got gloves, I got arm warmers, I got a vest, I got a pair of bike shorts, I got some extra food in case I want it. Like that bag is already as big as this box, right? You're gonna be like trying to dump out your bag and it's not gonna come out. You're gonna be like, what's wrong with my bag? Um, and when it comes out, it's just gonna be like, Bleh. like somebody barfed your gear closet. You're gonna say, what do I do with all this stuff? What goes on first, what do I do? If you can minimize the stuff in your gear bag, the better off you are, okay? Um, if you're planning on changing clothes tomorrow, like swimming in one thing and biking in another, like changing clothes, just know now that's gonna be really, really hard to do. So just set some mental expectations around that and maybe even try and find a volunteer who can help you. Because I'm telling you, if you try and put on a shirt when you're soaking wet out of the swim, it's gonna stop about here, right? And I don't, know, I don't care how flexible you are, you can't get that shirt. You're gonna be like doing this, you know? You're gonna get a cramp or something like that trying to get that shirt. Reduce the number of things you have uh, in transition. I, uh, for example, I, I carry salt pills with me, you know, on the bike when I'm out there and so on. That goes in a canister, that goes in my back pocket under my wetsuit. Um, I wear a race belt that goes underneath my wetsuit when I'm swimming, okay? Uh, so the only things that will be in my bag in T1 will be my shoes, my helmet, okay? In the morning, I put my bottles on my bike and I'll even tuck my sunglasses on there and whatever else I need. If I have arm warmers I want to put on, I roll them up like big donuts and I stick them on the end of my aero bars. I can do that when I get out there on the road. And so I hit transition and I put my shoes on, I put my helmet on, and I'm done, okay? Transition is, you know, I'm only working in transition for 30 seconds, 45 seconds, and I'm out the door. That transition is a reflection of my goals, right? I'm trying to get to Kona, I'm trying to have a fast race. Your transition should be a reflection of your goals. You want to be warm, you know you're going to be out there for a long day, or you need to be well fed, or you just swam for an hour 45, I'm an hour swimmer. If you swam for an hour 45, you need to eat more. So make your transition reflect your race goals, but understand that the more pieces you have in there, the harder that transition becomes, okay? And I'll just say this now because everyone asks. You, you will be able to get to your bags tomorrow if you have to, okay? They don't like to let you touch all the bags, so they've got them all lined up nice and neatly, but you can. Uh, but you do turn in your bike and your uh, run bags, your gear bags today. Special needs come in tomorrow. You drop them off at Alvin's Island when you walk in at body marking out there in the morning, okay? Um, so you get, you're wearing your shoes and you're running to your bike with all these other people running to their bikes. Everyone's kind of disoriented and salty trying to get to your bike. Be very smart in the transition area there. It's easy to kind of fall down or, you know, not, not so many people practice running in their bike shoes, just so you know. Uh, once you get your bike, you go out of transition right in front of the hotel here. You go from a space that's about as big as this area right here to a space that's probably about twice the, the width of, the, of this path right here in front of us. All these people with their bikes trying to get into this tiny little space. It gets incredibly log jammed, okay? I've seen people mount their own bike and someone else's. <laughs> if you're a tall guy and you've got a little lady next to you, it's game over. Or, you know, I've seen people take, you know, cleats to the shoulder or the chest, you know? Don't be the person who runs with your bike shoes to the line, I'm just gonna put this over here. Well, I put my shoes on over here. Uh, that's not gonna work. Right? Uh, not in that place. Okay, so do everything you need to do and get out of there. Know that the first 
50 feet is just as dangerous as any aid station out there on the day, okay? Get out of there, be smooth. I will be there for the team. If you're wearing the kit, I'll be screaming at you to ride your bike. It's just something I like to do. I tell you to chill out today, but tomorrow I'll be like, get on the bike! So that's me. You gotta smile for the camera. Um, now you get out there on Front Beach Road. Things to think about for this bike course. Uh, Front Beach Road is under construction. But the rest of it ain't that much better. All right, if you've been driving out there, there's some potholes and everything, okay? Uh, people are trying to get settled in. They're trying to, everyone's trying to start their watch, right? They're like, it doesn't count if I don't start my watch. They're not looking where they're going. They're starting their watch. Um, or they're doing something with their bike. Or they're trying to, you know, I've seen people run out of transition with bags of potato chips in their mouth. Because their bike is full of stuff. I have pictures of it, I swear, on our Flickr feed. Um, and they're trying to open a bag of potato chips and eat it while they're riding their bike, right? Um, Front Beach Road, you have to get into your rhythm. Uh, you have to be very smart and you want to be as safe as possible out here. Again, we're not in the first part of the first 90 minutes. You're just going JRA pace. You're just chilling it, okay? Um, once you turn on 79, then the race kind of opens up a bit. There's a little bit more room. There's an actual shoulder, okay? You want to be mindful of other people making kind of swervy turns or doing whatever, you know? If you've done a group ride before, doing a group ride with 3,000 other people who you've never met before is kind of sketchy. Especially when they're triathletes, and we all know that we're not exactly the best bike handlers, right? <laughs> I always say I can tell the person coming the other way is a triathlete when I wave at them, and they wave back and they go, ah! <laughs> and they swerve, like I let go of the bars with one hand, oh my god. Um, those people are riding with you. You may be one of those people, so be mindful of that, okay? Uh, the most dangerous place on the course are the aid stations, okay? Because people don't know what they're doing. And I'm going to talk about aid stations, okay? When you go to an aid station, your job is to get everything you need, and get going again. I recommend you consider stopping at every A station. I've never really had a good race where I've skipped an A station and later on, at the end of my race, days later, reflected and said, that was awesome. Like, I'm so glad I didn't do that. Um, usually I have a fueling problem or something happens later on, okay? A stations are a good benchmark to kind of get back in the day, assess where you are food-wise, okay? You're constantly saying, how am I eating, drinking, and so on. When you ride up to an A station, first thing, there's gonna be like a, like a mini soccer net or something to throw your bottles in. So drink as much water as you can, wherever you're going to throw away. Drink your water. If you're feeling warm, you can dump some on yourself, although it might be cold, so maybe that water feels good and warmer. Uh, you drink your water and you throw it in the net, get rid of all your trash. You want to get water on your bike. So you, as you're riding up, there's going to be people holding out their water bottles. Where's the water bottle? Don't buy your water bottle. Thank you. Um, when you see someone standing with a water bottle, you want to point at that person. That tells that person you're going to them. That tells everyone behind you that you're going to that person. Okay, they can see that. If you're up there going like, here I come, I'm coming for the water. You know, you try to talk to your friend when she's like five feet in front of you, and you're like, I think she just said she loves a Ricky Iglesias. Yes. <laughs> loves that, right? I can't get that. It's not gonna happen on race day either. So you point to that person, you want the bottle, okay? There's a couple different A station volunteers. There's this guy, who's pretty awesome. We like this guy, okay? There's this guy, who's okay. Not as great, but all right. And there's this guy. <laughs> they don't like this guy. All right, this guy's trying to knock you off your bicycle, you know, or really screw you up. Um, whatever you do when you're catching a bottle, when that bottle's coming at you and you're going anything over 60 miles an hour, you have to absorb the impact of that bottle, okay? You have to catch that bottle even though it's not moving because you're moving. It's like you're standing there and someone threw a bottle at you at 20 miles an hour. If I just like whip this at you, can you catch it? It's the same, same thing, right? But you need to catch that bottle. So the first bottle you get, you get it and you rack it, okay? And now you're looking for your next bottle. Get your next bottle, you're gonna drink that bottle as much as you can, pour it on yourself, whatever else you wanna do, and then you're gonna throw that bottle before you leave. So you enter that aid station having drunk a lot of water, taken it in, gotten rid of your trash, gotten a new bottle, and exited drinking a little more water, cooling yourself off, whatever you need to do, and getting rid of that bottle. So you are fully tanked up at the end of that, at that aid station, okay? I'll say it now, if, if you do not pee on this bike, 